Welcome to the Every Day is Saturday podcast. The number one motivation show on the planet. No more Mondays for you. It's time to make every day Saturday. Boom! This is the podcast where we help you to accept who you are, not where you are. On the roller coaster of life, you know we only sit in the front seat champion. So make sure you are fastened in tight. Let's go! Tired of feeling run down all the time during the week? We can help you make every day feel like it's a Saturday. Let's go pack your bags. It's time to leave Averageville. Introducing the man who thinks abnormal stands for above normal. When you're on fire, people will travel from miles around to watch you burn, baby. We are fired up. The host of the Every Day is Saturday show, Sam Crowley. Hello, champion, and welcome back to the Every Day is Saturday podcast. Um, I just saw the most disturbing photo. Um, wow, I was looking through some old photos, actually in a photo album. Remember those things when you actually when you had a camera, a disposable camera or a regular camera, and you actually had to get go get the film developed? Yeah, it was that kind of a photo. I was looking back. This was in 2001 after our daughter Madeline was born. Our oldest daughter was born in 2001. And it's a photo of my wife and I in downtown Cincinnati. And my wife, Madeline, must have been just a few weeks old at the time. My wife came down, brought the stroller and all that stuff. That Boy, it's amazing, isn't it, when you start having kids? Before kids, you just go to the store. After kids, you got to load up the car like you're going on a cross-country trip. You know, sippy cups and strollers and all these different things and diapers and it was I think that was the biggest eye opener when we had kids it's like hey hold on a second are we going on vacation or are we just going to Kroger what's going on here anyway uh, my wife came down brought our daughter and we were just going to go to lunch and we walked across downtown Cincinnati during lunchtime and we had a photo taken of us and I was in my suit and tie I had just gotten this ungodly bad haircut um, you think my haircut's bad now? You should see me back then. I got literally like a buzz cut, which wouldn't be bad if my face didn't look like somebody took a bicycle pump to the back of my head and just kept pumping for hours. Like I had this huge moon face, so fat, like so fat. And I looked so stressed out. But I'm smiling and I'm looking at that person in the picture. And I don't even recognize that person. Like that was the height. Not only was I unhealthy from a physical perspective, I was probably more unhealthy from a mental perspective. I was in a job that paid well. Never saw, you know, never saw my wife or our newborn child now working ridiculous hours for pennies on the dollar if you look at the amount of hours I put in. And I'm looking at that photo and I'm thinking, you're fat, but I know one thing, you are so depressed that I don't even know how you made it through that day, let alone that year, and how you came out of that darkness. And I'm, I'm now I fast forward now, what is that? It was 2001, so 22 years ago. And I don't even recognize that person. So there's a lot of things that work there. You know, a lot of lessons just looking at that. First of all, it's hilarious now to look back on, but it's also very depressing that thinking about what I tolerated. You know, we don't really get in life what we deserve. We get what we tolerate. And I was willing to tolerate being told where to go, what to do, how to act, how to talk, and all these different things in return for a paycheck that I got every week. So that was my tolerance level. And it could have gone even higher. And it did. I used to I kept going into work even earlier, working even harder. And so I remember, man, I got I remember just sitting around not that day because I was so numb. Uh, that old adage, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You know, So I'm looking at this picture. I'm in the frame, so I couldn't see it. Now that I'm looking at it 22 years later, I see everything going on with that photo. I, I, I see a very insecure individual who relied on the title of a job to justify my standing in this world. You know, And I didn't see it at the time. I knew it's kind of one of those things. You're so numb. You're almost like a zombie. You know what's going on around you, but you're so numb. It's like having an anesthetic or something. You know, if you go to, you, know, you go to the dentist, you know that dude's in your mouth grinding away with some drill, and who who knows what's happening with that root canal or something like that. But you can't feel it. You're just completely numb. That's where I was at that time, and then I started to come out of the anesthesia, 
And about a year later was when I started to think, no, 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 there's, this can't be it. I mean, this, this, this cannot be how my life ends up. I'm in my early to mid thirties. I'm out of shape mentally. I'm out of shape physically. I would have been more satisfied being out of shape physically, but I didn't want to accept being out of shape mentally. Yeah. I knew there was something that I, more I could do with my life. And so that's when I, I hired a personal trainer, not right away, you know, for the physical part, I hired a personal trainer, I'd, I'd say about 18 months later, maybe less than that, maybe 15 months later, and I've never stopped working out since. Like, I've always taken those principles that that gentleman gave me, this young kid, his name was Jared, I remember, he used to meet me at the gym at 5.30 in the morning, and it, that's the time I had to get to the gym, or else I couldn't work out, and I was still felt like I was late for work when I got there at 7 a.m., Yeah, after my workout. It was only two days a week, but I took those basic principles and I used him a couple days a week when I wasn't working with him directly. By the way, 50 bucks an hour was the best investment ever. I thought it was more money than I ever had at the time. Like, I can't pay you $100 a week. That's 400 a month just to what? Scream at me to tell me I need to do a push-up? Well, that's why you need a coach. Because once you learn from somebody who knows what they're talking about and can show you and then can teach you, you'll always have those principles with you long after that person leaves your life. Okay? That's lesson number one right there. Hire somebody because it's not about the transformation you experience at that moment, which can be huge, by the way, but it's about how you keep those with you for the rest of your life. Have you ever had a good mentor, like a really good teacher? I bet you still rely back on their advice and their strategies, no matter how many years ago that was, to get yourself through a certain situation or to improve on where you are. The mental part was the biggest biggest changer. And I, I've talked about this recently in the show. I've mentioned a hundred times that I think I just mentioned a few episodes ago when I went to that real estate investment cattle call and ended up buying the seminars. It had nothing to do with the information. See, people think when they buy courses and coaches and things like that, they think they're buying the information. What they're really buying is the transformation. So if you're a coach or you're a consultant, you don't sell information. You sell transformation. That's what people really want. They don't care how many videos you got to watch. You can watch one, you can watch a hundred. It doesn't matter. What am I going to get? How many Zoom calls? I don't care. I want to hire coaches. I don't care. Matter of fact, the less, the better for me. I don't want to be, you know, beholden to a weekly Zoom call. We'll get on a call when I need a call. You know, that's the coaching that I purchase. I'll, I'll get a hold of you when I need you. All right? You're busy. I'm busy. We'll figure it out. I'm looking for transformation. Don't care how much time of I got to watch a video or how many Zoom calls I get. I don't care at all about that stuff. Just the transformation. So I went to work after that real estate investment seminar that I purchased and it had nothing to do with the great training they give, they gave. It had to do with the mindset of the people that I was now in contact with that I'd never heard people talk like this before. You know, example, I'm at the seminar that I purchased and one of the trainers I was asking, "You really think I can make a half million dollars? Really?" He's like, "Sam, you see that guy over there?" Yeah. Does he look any smarter than you? And so just to describe, this gentleman was probably in his late 40s, uh, overweight, just describing. He was probably 5'10", 5'11", 250 pounds. So belt buckle was a little big is what I'm saying. And he goes, does that guy look like uh, he's 10 times smarter than you? I go, nope. Well, what would you guess he makes? And I knew the answer to the question. He makes 10 times as much as you do right now. So at the time, I was probably making 60, 70 grand a year. He was making six to seven hundred grand a year, working a quarter of the time I was working, and he looked happy. You know, yeah, he wasn't in the greatest shape. I didn't judge him by the outside; I judged by the inside. That's what I was there for. Life's an inside job. I want to know what's going on inside, and that I'll never forget. That I can, I could, if if I had to have one of those professional like police sketch drawings done, you know, do you have an idea who the criminal was, the suspect? Can you can you vision or face? Can you give me a sketch drawing? Yeah, I could do it. I could sketch this dude out in a New York minute. And it was 22 years ago, you know? And that's the type of impact that that single sentence had on my life, that don't judge people by the way they look, all right? They're not 10 times smarter than you. All they did was they learned a specific strategy, a lesson, something and they kept right there. They kept the magnifying glass over that. There's a reason I only do podcasts. There's a reason you don't see me posting on Instagram 10 times a day and LinkedIn and Facebook and TikTok. All of those platforms work, obviously. There's people doing very well on those platforms. I stay here. 
I love this platform. I love to podcast. I love to share a message. When the Spirit moves me, I've said it a thousand times, God gives me a message, I share it with you. Harvest the best, throw away the rest, you know? But man, when I saw that photo today, it it just stirred a lot of emotions. Not going to lie. It stirred positive, negative. I can't believe it. Positive in a sense that I escaped. I escaped from that body, the mental part and the physical part. So that was excitement. Uh, it brought me down. I'm not going to lie, man. It brought me down because I was thinking, what in the hell did I do with my life from age 20 to 35? I wasted it, you know? And I know I learned a lot. Look, I loved my time in the corporate game because I learned so much. I was around so many great people. But if you, if I mean, if you put a gun to my head and said, you know, would you rather have it or not have had it? I would have rather not have had it. I think I could have done so much more with my life in those 15 years. But God had me in that place for a reason. I get it. Every day of Saturday wouldn't have been launched in the way it was if I didn't go through that period of my life. But I'm, I'm, I just got to be honest with you. When I look at that photo, I'm like, damn, I wasted a lot of time. That's why sometimes I just want to shake people and say, you can't wait. You can't wait. What the hell are you waiting for? You cannot wait. you got to take action. It doesn't need to be the perfect action. Imperfect action is great. Do that. Do something. Do anything. But don't keep doing what you're doing if you're not satisfied. All right? So that was an image. And the first thought that came to my mind is you cannot see the picture when you're in the frame. So take a zoom out right now. Take some time. Do you like where you're at? Do you not like where you're at? If you don't like where you're at, do something, anything. Take action in a positive direction. It's not going to change overnight, but that transformation, I promise you, happens. Guaranteed. At what level? That's up to you. That's up to you. All right? Hope this message found you in a good spot. Hope it planted a seed in good soil. And make sure you share it with somebody who needs to hear it today. All right? Thanks for listening. Say it with me, gang. Have the best day ever. And that's a wrap. Another Everyday Saturday podcast in the books. Thanks so much for listening. Would you do your boy a favor? Would you get on iTunes or wherever you listen to the Everyday Saturday podcast and leave a rating for the show? It helps amazing people like you find the show faster. And that's what I'm looking for, amazing people like you. Hey, I'm always hanging out on the interwebs. You can check me out on Instagram, at Everyday is Saturday. Let me know you're listening to the show. Love, 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 love hearing from fans of the Everyday Saturday podcast. And one last thing, when you're ready to launch, get on my calendar, go to launchwithsam.com. You and I are going to work together to set rocket fuel to your dream. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'll see you on the next Everyday is Saturday podcast.